The number one thing that started making my vocal mixes stand out was making my reverb buses extremely unique. That and knowing how to blend them into a song was a game changer. And let me tell you, we're gonna get deep into the blending with these 10 tips. Yeah, it's gonna be a smoothie. <laughs> Where's my Oscar? Tip number one, use buses, not inserts. If you have several vocal tracks, you'll wanna make sure that they're living in the same place, in the same room. Sending all your vocal tracks to one track to be processed by one reverb is the way to go. You'll see on this bus, I have my reverb plugin, the Arturia Rev Plate 140, a terrific plate reverb that emulates the iconic EMT 140. I'll be getting more into this plugin a little bit later in the video. It's an incredible reverb. To get started, I'll send the signal from each vocal track to it. If you have several different reverbs on multiple tracks, it's gonna be way harder to control, and it's gonna bog down your computer. <laughs> Blending in your reverb with the fader is way easier to control and easier to automate, which I'll get into a little bit later. Now that you've got your reverb on one track and you're sending all your vocals to it, it's time for tip two. EQ that verb. EQing before going into your reverb is a great way to reduce muddiness in the low end and any sharpness that might be bouncing around really fast in the high end. Cutting out the low and high end before going through the reverb is actually known as the Abbey Road trick. Cut up to 600 hertz with your high pass filter and between six and 10K with your low pass. Notch out a tiny amount around two to four K if you want. That'll help reduce any harshness that might be bouncing around up there. Check out the difference. Here are the vocals going through the reverb with no EQ. Just cause I don't want you, but it doesn't mean, doesn't mean I won't find another I don't want to know your on. name oh, Don't need your drinks, no You can keep your number I can't see this way yeah, it's way cleaner and a lot less harsh. You can also use EQ after the reverb plugin, but I find that using the EQ before helps keep the natural tone of the reverb instead of shaping it afterwards. Tip three is all about keeping your vocals up front, but still keeping the size and tail of your reverb. Use sidechain compression. By using sidechain compression, you'll be able to trigger compressor to reduce the gain on your reverb, but only when the vocals are playing. You can do this by sidechaining your main vocal to a compressor that lives after your reverb plugin. Now you'll notice the compressor is only working when the vocals are playing. Just cause I don't want you, babe It doesn't mean I won't find another I don't wanna know your name You might be thinking, Isabel, but the vocals are already coming through that channel. You're right, but it's going through the reverb first. By sending a dry signal to the compressor, you'll duck the reverb only when the singing happens and keep those sweet reflections after the phrase is complete. Here's the vocal without the compressor. Just cause I don't want you, babe It doesn't mean, doesn't mean so the reverb is pretty much washing throughout, and here it is with the compressor. Just cause I don't want you, babe It doesn't mean, doesn't mean I won't find another I don't wanna know your name And now the vocal is a lot clearer, and afterwards you get that nice wash from the reverb. Tip four has to be one of my favorites. That's because the options and possibilities are endless. 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 Effects before a reverb. Any effect is gonna shape the dry sound coming in and hit the reverb a bit differently for a unique, flavor. For example, let's take a distortion plugin and add it before the reverb. I'm going to add the Lander FX voice plugin. Boom. Total distortion. Let's blend it in and see how it's affecting the reverb. Just cause I don't want you, but it doesn't mean, doesn't mean I won't find another. I don't want to know your name. Don't need your drinks, no. You can keep your number. Whoa. I'm going to solo the aux reverb track to have a closer listen. Just cause I don't want you, babe. It doesn't mean, doesn't mean Fancy. And just like that, you're taking a normal verb and adding your own unique spin on it to make your vocals stand out. Tip five, use different reverbs for different sections of your song. Separate your vocal tracks based on the sections of the song and then send each of those to a different reverb. On the chorus reverb, I'm gonna make it a little less wide and I'm gonna decrease the decay time a little bit. So it's a little drier, it's a little bit more up front. And then on the verse vocal, I'm gonna send it to bus two. And on that reverb bus, I've got a much wider reverb and the decay time is quite a bit longer. So it's gonna be really washed out, really spacey for a totally different vibe compared to the chorus. Let's have a listen to the difference between the chorus and the verse vocal reverb. Go ahead and call me a pessimist. A pessimist. Maybe I'm a realist. To me, hi, 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 hi. if you wanna talk, why you dreaming? Living out of fantasy. 
you can really hear the difference between the chorus and the verse. Tip six, automate your reverbs. That was an automation line. If you really like a single reverb for your entire song and want to keep the same characteristics throughout, then automate your reverb fader. For your choruses, bring it down, and for your verses, boost it up. Alternatively, you can also automate the amount of vocal being sent to the reverb. In the case of this Arturia Rev Plate 140 reverb plugin, I can actually automate the plate models. That could be interesting for different sections or even different phrases. Check what parameters exist on your reverb plugin and consider automating them. By the way, if you're digging the Arturia Rev Plate 140 plugin and the Lander effects plugins, check them out here. Tip seven is all about throws. <laughs> Vocal reverb throws. Vocal throws are all about highlighting a specific phrase or even a syllable and accentuating it with a burst of verb. This works really well when you have an empty space after a phrase and want the vocal to continue to fill up that space. The best way to do this is to select the phrase you want to highlight, duplicate it to a second track, and throw a reverb on that that is set to 100%. Now blend it in with the fader, or you can even automate the reverb to get even more selective. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean. Awesome. Here's before the throw. What you, babe, it doesn't mean. And here it is with the throw. What you, babe, it doesn't mean. Really fills out that space. Tip eight, pan your reverbs. This is another way to create extremely wide and unique spaces for your vocals. Set up two mono buses and pan one hard left and one hard right. Send your vocals to both buses equally. Now you can put two completely different reverbs on each channel. On my left channel, I've got a room reverb with a pretty long decay, and on my right channel, I've got a darker reverb with a medium decay. Now let's try blending them both in. Just cause I don't want you, babe, it doesn't mean I won't find another. I don't wanna know your name, don't need your drinks, no, you can keep your number. That's huge! On the topic of space, we have tons of room for more subscribers. And notice that many of our viewers aren't actually subscribed. Hit that bell, that thumbs up, and show us some love in the comments. It'll help get this video to more people. Road to 121K! <laughs> Tip nine, 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 nine use pre-delay. Pre-delay is how long it takes the reverb plugin to start processing the signal. To get a natural sounding reverb, setting the pre-delay is crucial. Humans like you and I are accustomed to hearing a certain amount of delay before hearing the reverb. Many professional audio engineers set their reverb according to the tempo of the song that they're working on. On your reverb plugin, you'll notice that it's often set by milliseconds. You can use an online BPM to milliseconds calculator to figure out the correct amount of milliseconds that you should set your pre-delay to, depending on what you're going for. When you're setting your pre-delay, think zero to 10 milliseconds would be a small space 10 to 20 milliseconds would be a medium space, and anything above 20 milliseconds would be a large space. Finally, tip 10, know what sound you want. I gave a ton of info in this video, but at the end of the day, make sure you know what sound you're going for depending on the kind of music you're making. It's good to experiment, but don't overanalyze it. Think of what kind of sound you want in terms of brightness or darkness, dense or diffused. Remember, the reverb should be audible, but not distracting. Don't be afraid to go back to the drawing board if it sounds bad when you can actually hear it. I think I covered them all. Did I miss one? Let me know down in the comments. Let me know if this video helped you and what you'd like to learn next. See ya. Yay. That's a wrap.